Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy, and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for the week of July 30th through August 5th. Let's get started. The first thing we sold was one of the items from the B-Stock Liquidation Palette. And we sold this item on Facebook Marketplace. It was a local pickup. It was one of the Ion Pathfinder portable speakers. It sold for $60 even on best offer. And of the items from that palette, all the individual cost of those items broke down to about $47.18. I will link that palette video above and in the description box below so you can check out our entire experience with that palette if you haven't already and see whether we thought it was worth it or not and how much profit we think we're going to make on that in the end. Next up, all of the rest of the sales from this video are going to be eBay sales. The next sale was a Nike Team 100% Wool Strap Back Oregon State Beavers Visor. We found this item in the Goodwill bins and paid 67 cents for it, and it sold for our full asking price of $22.99. Next up was a Play School Heroes Transformers Rescue Bots Cade Burns action figure. It was just a really small little figure about that big. We got this in a bag of toys from the thrift store. We paid just 19 cents for it, and it sold on best offer for $10 even. Next up was a Columbia men's button down. Um, it was a Hawaiian-esque print, although it wasn't a Hawaiian print. It just kind of had a Hawaiian-ish Hawaiian feel. Uh, it was a brand new with tags shirt that we got at an estate sale. We paid $6 for it and it sold for $19 even on best offer. Unfortunately, when the buyer got it, they stated that they just didn't like it and ended up returning it. We refunded them and we've relisted it. Next up was a really cute, about five inch long Texas Christian University TCU Horn Frogs Christmas ornament. And it was kind of a, um, almost like an animated look of the mascot. I don't know how to describe it, but it had kind of a cloisonne-ish look to the way it was made, but it was made with um, maybe resin or something like that. It was hollow on the inside. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not describing this ornament very well, but uh, it was super cute and unique. It was a very unique material. This we got at a garage sale for 50 cents and it sold for $16 on best offer. Uh, we picked this up over the summer, so I didn't expect, expect it to sell very quickly, but surprisingly it did. It sold at the end of the summer, which was out of season, and that was good. That uh, just goes to show that Christmas stuff will sell any time of the year. Next up was a 2016 Disney Moana playset, but it was just some of the replacement parts from that playset. It was uh, one of the characters, I guess maybe the character Maui. I don't know. I've, I've actually never seen that movie. Uh, but I think it was the character Maui and then part of the actual playset. Uh, we had gotten this actually, I think, in the same toy bag that that Cade Burns firefighter transformer character that, that I mentioned earlier was in. This listing sold for $15.98 and we had paid just 19 cents for it. And when I comped it, I don't remember seeing very many listed, so I like at all, even of the full play sets. At the time I listed it, there weren't very many listed. And the buyer I remember specifically reached out to us and thanked us for listing it and was really happy to have it. So I don't know if this is a hard item to come by or maybe they were just specifically looking for the parts that we had, but I always like it when the buyers reach out and, and thank us because that's part of why we do what we do is trying to you know, connect the buyer with the item and keep the item out of the landfill. So this was a specifically memorable sale because of, of that buyer letting us know how happy they were to have the item. Uh, next up was a Thomas and Friends, Thomas the Tank Engine, Best of James Vintage VHS. 
We had gotten this at our local thrift store. We paid 26 cents for it and it sold on our full asking price of $12.99. And pretty much any kids vintage kids VHS like Thomas the Tank Engine, Blue's Clues, Barney and Friends, things like that uh, tend to sell. There's nostalgia for that. People who watched those shows when they were kids want to show them to their kids now. So there is um, a market for those VHS. So we will pick them up if we can find them for a cheap enough price. And our thrift store tends to have them and prices them around 25 cents so we can get them for 25 cents and then a lot of times even half of that on half price day. This particular movie went to the UK through the global shipping program. Next up was one of the items from the B-Stock liquidation palette. It was a Yamaha soundbar and the wireless subwoofer that went with it. It was in used condition but we tested it and it worked. It sold for $149.99 and we had paid $47.18 for each of the items on that liquidation palette, and we did get positive feedback on this item. Next up was a lot of two SpongeBob SquarePants beverage napkins. They were new in the package. We got these in the Goodwill bins. We paid 61 cents for them, and they sold for our full asking price of $14.99. Next up was a lilac and black zebra print drop waist Zara dress. We got this at a thrift store. We paid $2.17 and it sold on offer to buyer for $31.98. Next up was a sleeveless Def Leppard t-shirt. It wasn't vintage. It was a modern t-shirt that was made to look vintage. I got this at a garage sale in a box that was marked a dollar. So I paid a dollar for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $25 even. Next up was another item we got in the B-Stock liquidation palette. This was just a little replacement satellite speaker that went with a Vizio soundbar. So we didn't have the soundbar. All we had was the replacement satellite speaker. And we actually didn't even know if the satellite speaker worked because we didn't have the soundbar set up to test it. But we listed it anyway. We listed it as is and it sold for $24.99. Next up was a Bath and Body Works body mist in the scent Beach Nights. So um, that has like a toasted marshmallow scent. And that sold for $30 even on best offer. And I had paid just $2.23. Next up was a Banana Republic women's stretch, cotton stretch pencil skirt. That sold for $12.78 on best offer. And we had paid... $1.35 at the thrift store. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was another Banana Republic item. This one was a blush colored button up cardigan sweater. This sold for $16 even on best offer. And we also got this at the thrift store. We paid $3.78. This we also got positive feedback on. Next up was a brand new in the package wet brush brush cleaner. We got this at a garage sale for 50 cents. We actually got several of these and we've sold a few of them. I think we might have a couple left. This sold for $10 and 38 cents. Next up was a book that we got at the thrift store. It was called Italian Regional Cooking and it was from 1969, I think. Yeah, that sold for $16 and 99 cents and we had paid just a dollar three at the thrift store. Next up was another book, but this was a book that belonged to my husband. It was actually a little hardcover novella that went with a video game, I think. Uh, we no longer had the video game. All we had was this book, and we had this book listed in our store, in our eBay store, for a very, very long time without any interest in it. It took maybe two or three years to sell, so this is not something that I would pick up if I ever saw it. Definitely not something that, that moved quickly at all. But it did eventually sell for $9.58 on offer to buyer, and uh, we did get positive feedback on it. So it did eventually sell, but if I ever saw it anywhere, I would, I would definitely not pick it up. Next up was another book, but this was a little paperback booklet. We picked up uh, several of these, maybe like a, a stack of eight or ten of them at the Goodwill bins, 
and they were by Zippy Loom. And they're little pattern books for knitting scarves, but they also had, I guess it was a product advertisement for the Zippy Loom, and then it had scarf patterns in it also. This we paid 61 cents for, and it sold for our full asking price of $8.49. Next up was a vintage 1982 Cabbage Patch doll. We got her at the thrift store for $6.41, and she sold for $20 even on best offer. There is not a lot of money in Cabbage Patch dolls unless they are in brand new in their box or unless they're wearing their original clothes. So if you're in it to make a lot of money, I probably would say pass on the Cabbage Patch dolls, but I can't pass on a Cabbage Patch doll because they're so nostalgic for me. Like my mom was one of the moms that was, you know, fighting to get me a Cabbage Patch doll back in the 80s. So I have a lot of personal memories of Cabbage Patch dolls. So if I see one just laying in the thrift store, I can't just leave it laying there. I have to pick it up and go find a new home for it. Even if I'm only going to make a couple dollars on it, that's just, you know, how I am. I can't just leave it laying there. So um, that's why I always pick them up and sell them because they do always sell. I'm just not making tons of profit on them. But you know, it's a Cabbage Patch doll. I just can't stand to leave it laying there. And I also just cannot stand the thought of that ending up in the landfill somewhere either. Uh, next up was a vintage Eddie Murphy album. Uh, not of his comedy. This was actually his music. If you were not aware, Eddie Murphy actually put out a music album. Uh, it's not the best music album I've ever heard, but also not the worst. So it was called How Could It Be by Eddie Murphy. We purchased this at the thrift store for $1.03 and it sold for $13.33. Next up was a better purchase. This was a, it was called the Mighty Carver Chainsaw. It was an electric knife and it was made to look like a chainsaw. So I guess it was, you know, looking like you're like hacking at your meat with a chainsaw. So kind of a funny gag gift type thing. We paid $5 for that at a, um, garage sale was brand new in the package, never used, and it sold really quickly for $59.99. So if you ever see one of those, they, they sell quickly, or at least the one that I did sold very quickly. And uh, we did get a, a funny message from the buyer, at least to me, it was kind of funny. Uh, they left a message saying, please call me and left their phone number saying when you are here, <laughs> like as if I was going to personally deliver their chainsaw knife to their house and then say, if I don't answer, just, it's okay for you to just leave the package with, without me signing for it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we just, I, 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 what do you do when you get messages like that? You know, we just didn't respond. We just said, you know, thank you for your purchase and didn't send the item with any signing, of course, which we weren't going to do anyway, but that was an unusual message to get. And I don't know. I don't know what to think when we get messages like that. Next up was a Kodak Easy Share digital camera. We got this at a garage sale. We paid $5 for it. It took kind of a long time to sell, but did eventually sell for our full asking price of $46.99. So I would say worth the wait on that. Um, it did work. We tested it and it worked. Next up was a women's Nike golf polo. That we got at a thrift store. We paid $3.79 for it, and it sold for our full asking price of $22.99. Next up was the one and only Cutco knife we've ever found. We do look for them every time we go to garage sales and estate sales, but this is the only one we've ever found. This was a bread knife, although it didn't have the serrated edges that you would usually expect on a bread knife. It was just a dull edge. It was an unusual knife. I've never seen one like that before. We paid uh, $2.17 for it, and it sold very quickly for $29.99. Next up was a J. Crew, a vintage J. Crew mid-length gray wool tweed jacket, uh, or pea coat, actually. Not a jacket, but a pea coat. And that I got at a thrift store for $4.87. This jacket, though, um, the lining had some damage to it. The lining was actually torn in multiple places, and I did disclose that. And then it also had some very, very faint staining on the sleeves, which I disclosed. 
Um, it sold for $20 even on best offer. Next up was a Bath & Body Works 8 ounce body cream in the scent Beach Nights. This sold for $26 even on uh, best offer and I had gotten that at that same garage sale that I got that Beach Nights body spray and I paid $2.23 for it. Next up was a pair of vintage Doc Martens combat boots. They were brown, men's size US 10. We got these at the same um, estate sale where we got the Cutco knife. We paid $5 for them and they sold on, actually we paid $5.41 with tax. And they sold for $70 even on best offer. They sold very quickly. Doc Martens usually sell very, very quickly. Next up was a really cute, like it looked like 1960s mod dress. Uh, but it wasn't vintage. It was a modern dress. And when I looked at the brand Julie Brown, which this dress was, I think it was sold at maybe like Nordstrom's or something, but it didn't, it didn't move very quickly. I don't know if I would pick this brand up again, but it was like a hot pink satin lining with like a gold lame lace overlay. It was super cute. Anyway, this dress sold for $30 even on best offer and I had paid $2.50 for it. Next up was a Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack album record on vinyl, and it sold for $10.68 on offer to buyer, and we had paid $1.03 at the thrift store. Next up was a, the brand was Mimi and Maggie. Uh, I don't know where you get this brand, but it looked kind of like a boutique style brand. Um, but it was a toddler size Mexican style peasant top. So it was like a white peasant top and it had really pretty floral embroidery all over it. It was such a cute top. And I paid a dollar for it at a garage sale and it sold on best offer for $12. Uh, when I listed it, I saw that it had like some faint stains on it. Included that in the listing or so I thought I did. But unfortunately, when the buyer got it, she opened a return request stating that it had stains on it and that that information wasn't included in the listing. So um, I'm thinking, well, no, I, I did include that in the listing. And I thought I had. But, you know, I didn't immediately respond back to her and say, no, that was included in the listing. I actually, like, you know, went back to my listing and looked to see if I included it and was horrified to see that it actually said excellent used condition. I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, what did you do? So I had made a mistake and listed it incorrectly. Who knows what happened? I probably got distracted or you imagine yourself doing something and then you think you've done it. I don't know. That's how my brain works though. So anyway, I was just horrified. And the way I handled this is I was just, just honest with her. I just said, I'm, you know, I'm so, so sorry. I knew that those stains were there. I intended to include it in the listing and I thought I did. You're right. It is not included in the listing. It should have been uh, you know, I'm going to make it right. We're going to refund your money 100% and you don't have to send the item back. You can keep it. You can donate it. You can do whatever you want with the item. You know, we're giving you back 100% of your money and no further action is required on your part. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience. And I I'm fully expecting to get negative feedback. You know, obviously I've made a mistake. Not anything I can do about it, but I was very lucky. She was extremely nice about it. And she actually went to the trouble of leaving us positive feedback, stating that we had um, provided her with excellent customer service and provided a full refund. And so I was extremely grateful for that. You know, you can't ask for a, a nicer buyer than that. But I did mess up very badly on that listing. So I hate that. Because I, you know, we always want to provide the best customer service for our buyers, and that is not the best customer service. Oops. Uh, next up was a Betty Crocker's Vintage Cookbook. We got this at the same estate sale that we got the Cutco Knife and the Doc Martens Boots. Vintage C Betty Crocker's cookbooks are definitely a bolo item. This one was in pretty bad shape. Some of the pages were stuck together to the point where when I peeled them apart, like it did a lot of damage to the text where some of it wasn't readable. Um, I did disclose all of that in the listing, but this item still sold very, very quickly for $36.54. 
uh, if you find one of these and it's in a lot better condition, you can fetch a lot more money for it. But any of these vintage Betty Crocker's cookbooks, definitely worth picking up for the right price. I paid $3.25 for this item. We did get positive feedback for it. Next up was a set of two Kiss uh, cassettes. They were Alive 2 by Kiss. These sold for $19.99 and I had paid just a dollar for these at a garage sale. And we got positive feedback on these as well. Next up was a Torrid bra. Uh, it was brand new with tags. We got this at a garage sale for $3 and it sold for $32.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a pair of men's Levi's red jeans. They sold for $35 even on best offer and we had paid $3 for these at a garage sale. Next up was a uh, vintage Hobby Hill picture frame hang -a light. So this was like an enamel light, electric light that you would hang over a picture frame to illuminate it. This sold for $45.99, and this is some of the old stock that we got from the other business that we own, which is a custom picture frame store. We got positive feedback on this item. Next up was a lot of two pint beer pint glasses. They were Dia de los Muertos theme. These came from a, uh, a thrift store. We paid $2.17, and these are from a brewery local to our area called Var and Sons. These sold for $38.38 on offer to buyer. Next up, I'm going to go over a couple of high-value collector cards that sold from my husband's personal collection. If you watched uh, last week's or the one of our latest uh, What Sold videos, you might have seen that we sold one of our Magic the Gathering cards called Soul Ring. The last one that we sold, I think, sold for $69, which was nice, but uh, we did sell another one. I mentioned in the last video that we have sold several of these. This particular one, um, in, it's from the Magic the Gathering Unlimited set. The card is called Soul Ring and it sold for $83 on auction. And we got positive feedback on that item. And next up was a 1994 Bowman's Best Refractor Baseball card. This card sold for $37.99 on our full asking price. And we got positive feedback on this card as well. And last but not least, I'll go over the remaining collectible cards that sold from my husband's personal collection. We sold 29 cards valued at $10 and under for a total of $83.41. So we had a really good week of selling cards this particular week. I'm I probably because we are coming off of a really good couple of weeks of selling cards. We had some of those really, really high value cards that we had sold, so eBay was probably really heavily promoting our cards, and that's why we were selling all of these cards. Also, we had a couple of sales to single buyers that were like 10 cards at a time and 12 cards at a time, and that was really helping our card sales out. But there are some weeks where we only sell a couple of cards, uh, you know, five cards at a time here and there, but this particular week was really heavy on the cards, and uh, all those little sales really add up, so... You know, you might think, well, they're only selling cards for $2.29, but, you know, those $2.29 cards add up to $83.41 in just one week. So it really works out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I did want to mention that uh, if you have an eBay store, now is the time to make sure that you go into your subscriber discount section and grab that $50 coupon and apply that towards shipping supplies. Today is October 1st. We made sure and did that today and got some free boxes. So make sure you go in there and do that and don't miss out on that important subscriber discount that you can get for having an eBay store. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps out our channel. And if you want to see more videos from us, make sure that you subscribe to our channel with the notification bells turned on so you can be kept informed of all of our latest content. Thank you so much for joining us and we will catch you on the flip side.